ahead of the centenary anniversary of the founding of the Legion of Mary, we reflect this evening a quotation from the founder, Frank Duff, and our reflection this evening is making each act perfect. Let us work as the genuine artist would. We must make each act, however simple, a perfect one, which will lend itself to Mary's fruitful motherhood, enabling her to lavish her magnificence on us. And what is of magnificence but the Holy Spirit, who is with Mary and whom she gives? I now recite the Frank Duff Prayer. God our Father, you inspired your servant Frank Duff with a profound insight into the mystery of your church, the body of Christ, and of the place of Mary, the mother of Jesus, in this mystery. In his immense desire to share this insight with others and in filial dependence on Mary, he formed her legion to be a sign of her maternal love for the world and a means of enlisting all her children in the church's evangelizing work. We thank you, Father, for the graces conferred on him and for the benefits accruing to the church from his courageous and shining faith. With confidence, we beg you that through his intercession, you grant the petition we lay before you. We ask too, that if it be in accordance with your will, the holiness of his life may be acknowledged by the church for the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. 
You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, O Lord of mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. From Paul, appointed by God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and from our brother Timothy to the saints in Colossae, our faithful brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We have never failed to remember you in our prayers and to give thanks for you to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ever since we heard about your faith in Christ, and the love that you show towards all the saints because of the hope which is stored up for you in heaven. It is only recently that you heard of this when it was announced in the message of the truth. The good news which has reached you is spreading all over the world and producing the same results as it has among you ever since the day when you heard about God's grace and understood what this really is. Epaphras, who taught you, is one of our closest fellow workers and a faithful deputy for us as Christ's servant. And it was he who told us all about your love in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I am like a growing olive tree in the house of God, I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I will thank you forevermore, for this is your doing. I will proclaim that your name is good in the presence of your friends. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. Please stand to acclaim the gospel. The Lord has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Leaving the synagogue, Jesus went to Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever and they asked him to do something for her. Leaning over her, he rebuked the fever and it left her. And she immediately got up and began to wait on them. At sunset, all those who had friends suffering from diseases of one kind or another brought them to him and laying his hands on each, he cured them. Devils too came out of many people howling, you are the son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. When daylight came, he left the house and made his way to a lonely place. The crowds went to look for him and when they had caught up with him, they wanted to prevent him leaving them. But he answered, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns too, because that is what I was sent to do. And he continued his preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. We are called by Christ to be a sign of his love for all mankind, 
Let us pray now for his help and support in all our needs. We pray for the church throughout the world, that with confidence in the power of God, it may continue to bring a message of the love and peace of God's kingdom to all people. Lord, hear us. Many people throughout the world are engaged in bringing healing and relief to others. We pray that the power of Christ within them will sustain them in their mission of love. Lord, hear us. In today's gospel, we hear of the healing power of Christ. Trusting in his compassion and love, we call on Jesus to lay his hands on those in our parish who are experiencing pain, depression, or loneliness. Let our hearts be open to the touch of his healing love. Lord, hear us. And we pray for all our own intentions. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have died. Remember Marie Press, whose first anniversary is today, and the anniversaries of Jackie McGorgan and Francis Berry. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Father, hear the prayers we make trusting in your loving concern. Help us become a community of caring love we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation. But what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, 
and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Eamon our Bishop, his assistant Bishop Michael and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our venerable spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And as usual, I'll distribute communion firstly to the people in this right-hand centre aisle. And then when the minister has finished distributing communion and the people of the Stations of the Cross, I then I will give communion to the people in the left-hand middle aisle.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and stay safe.